What's up, you amazing listeners and viewers tuning in from whichever platform you like to get your podcast from. I'm your host, Chronic, from the Cannabis Chronicles on Instagram and YouTube, and I am also the host of this amazing podcast brought to us by Homegrown Cannabis Co. So be sure to hit that like button, that follow button, and definitely check out homegrowncannabisco.com for all your top top notch cannabis seeds because you know they are pretty amazing to get some seriously quality genetics like i have in my own personal garden now we're not here to talk about my garden or my autoflowers that i'm growing we're here to talk about one of the kings of autoflowers on youtube currently mr joe colwell from basement autoflowers on youtube and instagram with over eight thousand subscribers and growing some impressive guests on his podcast list like nate hammer and kyle cushman as well as tommy chong thank you so much joe for coming on to the show big round of applause thanks so much for having me man quite the entrance there uh <laughs> I'm not that spectacular, guys. I'm a regular home grower that's uh, getting some luck here in the cannabis game lately. Well, that's awesome. That's all it really takes somewhat. And uh, to be honest, man, you're out there, you're putting content out. And to the eyes of many viewers, you're quite the man himself, especially interviewing someone like Tommy Chong. Now, before we get into stuff like that, because I have plenty of questions for you, um, I always like to start my guest off with a really fun question. What are your top three favorite strains that you've been enjoying lately or that you've ever consumed is there a top three for you yeah there, there's a top three for for sure man number one for me my top favorite strain that i've grown and consumed is the gorilla cookies from fast Bud genetics Ooh, number two for me was a really kind of awesome experience here recently i got to grow the strawberry cough from homegrown and then i also got to smoke it with kyle cushman which kind of led us full circle back to this show. And and then I go back to my all all time favorite, man. Any Bruce Banners I can get my hands on are really hitting home for me, man. So, but the strawberry cough was super cool, man. It's been on my list to kind of knock off and I hit it off early in my career here, putting out content. So it's pretty exciting. And how cool to smoke with strawberry cough with none other than Kyle himself. That's absolutely phenomenal. I mean, you have a uh, quite the list. It, it looks like you uh, kind of like your fruitier terpenes and you kind of like those more head euphoric highs as go, go, go getter energetic type things. Is that right? 100% man. Like for me, the cannabis is playing that like innovative, creative mode. I'm smoking it to like get down and get behind the camera and make some content and make some funny stuff for the community. And then also capturing my grows. So I'm looking for that racy high, that high that's going to get you up and get you clean in the house. But in a, and I'm not using the dustpan. I'm just grabbing onto that camera and, and hitting into the grow room. And so I love you're that. You're 100% right. Those are the terps I'm after. Well, hell yeah. That's amazing. And, you know, big round of applause on all the content you really do put out. You, I scroll through Instagram. There's only a few people I follow right now because my, my page gets banned every now and then. And it really is quite a funny thing how often that happens. So I don't get to follow all the pages I want to follow all the time because it gets kicked out of my follows here and there. But you're one of them I consistently follow because I really do enjoy your reels and just all your funny content. So thank you for putting it out there. Um, now, next question, man. Um, what made you want to get into autoflowers and how did you get started growing them? Man, honestly, it was like I was the, the average home grower just trying to basically save some money and learn how to grow. So I just went to YouTube and I just started searching like how to grow weed, how to grow cannabis, how to grow pot every kind of different sentence I could put together. And I came across a guy called from seed to stone yes. and he was actually doing auto flowers. Have you, have you seen him before? He's amazing. I've been wanting to get him on the show for a while. He's absolutely awesome. Yeah. And I, I stumbled across his page and then his page led to Mr. Canuck. And then mm -hmm. I realized, Hey, there's a community of people that are growing at home in legal areas and, and making it kind of fun and producing top quality flowers. So, I just got a cheap light off Amazon for a hundred bucks and decided I'm going to take a swing at this. And auto flowers just seemed more simple for me mm -hmm. back then. I mean, I was panicking about everything. I was worried about the light cycle. Yes. Where am I going to grow? Am I going to get in trouble? Like, are people going to smell this? Am I going to lose <laughs> my job? So I just kind of decided auto flowers, no light cycle. This is easy, man. Let's mm -hmm. run and roll with it. And it kind of took off, man. And I kind of fell in love with them. That's amazing. And, you know, it's nice to hear that you're actually a true novice with them. And for those listening and, and hearing Joe talk, he really is a true novice. A year ago, he started his channel, I believe, almost like your 
earliest video, at least that you have on. I don't know if you have any unlisted, um, but um, that was when I first saw you was around a year ago and it was just with, with some content that you were putting out and then you started putting out seed to harvest videos and just more and more autoflower content. Um, I think the one that I saw was how to water your autoflowers. That was one of the first videos I watched and you did very good. You were really talking uh, great um, uh, techniques. And one of the videos I remember watching after that was how to top your autoflowers, which that brings me into my next question was, were, were there any learning curves early on for you with training techniques or dealing with autoflowers? Because they can be kind of sensitive to stress depending on the genetics you have, but it sounds like you kind of started with some good genetics. So were there any learning curves you had or hiccups? Yeah, man. I mean, the biggest learning curve for me was just kind of giving myself the confidence to get in the garden. Like, I panic, man, and the people that grew before us, and not a lot of them, but a lot of the people that were growing and are still growing or that were selling this on the gray market, they were more or less gangsters, right? Yep. So they had this pride over their flower, which I came to understand why, because once you start growing, you realize how awesome this stuff actually is, but they didn't really want to show anybody how to do it. Mm -hmm. So my learning curve was just like finding areas and avenues to find this information. Now, I mean, five years in, this information's everywhere because of shows like this and Mr. Grow It and uh, the Do Grow shows and all these people that are bringing on so many cool guests to share this stuff. But the biggest learning curve was just try new things and don't overcomplicate it. Like when I'm preaching or I'm like teaching people or, or giving people my advice, my advice is just keep it simple, man. Let's not worry about all the big words and let's not worry about anything like that. Let's just get it from seed to harvest first off. And then let's start dialing things in, get a better light, get better ways to control your humidity, get better ways to do this. But when it comes to topping, I just kind of did it and it worked out, man. Mm -hmm. Like there was no really downside to it. I just kind of got lucky throughout my whole grow, knock on wood, realistically. <laughs> well, that's awesome. And, you know, sometimes that luck is really how it happens. You kind of just stumble onto techniques that really work. And I love that you say go like pretty much chill with it don't go overboard don't go buy all the fancy stuff at the start because that is a problem i'm sure you're as you stepped into the light of advocacy and becoming an educator i'm sure you're getting it more and more about hearing people where they say you know i've bought this this and this and my garden's not doing this i've spent so much money what do i do can you help me and it's like oh really you didn't need like 50 percent of this just use this just use this and you'll be good and it's like the avenues of education are, you're absolutely right. They're finally starting to branch out there. <clears throat> I appreciate you mentioning this show. I, I always appreciate when people take note and, you know, if, if people really enjoy the show, I, that's, that's always my goal is just to educate. But as well as you mentioned, um, Mr. Grow It and Do Grow Show and these various um, other shows like Seed to Stone. And these are all sources, resources that are absolutely phenomenal for these uh, novices to grow from and learn from. And like you said, you kind of staggered into that grow technique, um, you know, with staggering into that grow technique, did topping become something you used in your garden? And is it something that you would recommend novices listening to utilize for their auto flowers? Yeah, man, when it, when it came to the autos, I mean, my mindset was, I want to try to get weed as quick as I possibly can. And the autos were going to give me that avenue. That was number one. Number two, everybody around my local area was growing auto flowers. So all the advice that I could have locally, like for people to visit my garden, were coming from those local avenues before I found Instagram. So like topping right off the bat for a novice, I would say don't worry about it. Just let's just literally give this thing water. Let's watch it grow. Watch how it forms and get it to harvest so we can smoke that weed and realize <laughs> Even off shitty weed, I'm still going to get high. Yep. That's the main thing, guys. Like, there's people out there that panic and they're worried about, like, investing this money because they're not, they don't want to get, they want to be able to get, like, that dank nug. Yeah. You're not going to get that for a few years. No. You're going to get lucky maybe once or twice, but you're going to fuck up a lot. And you're going to get boof and you're going to get flaky weed and you're going to make a bunch of cookies because it's great for that stuff. Yep. But it's going to take you some time to get it dialed in. So I recommend not doing any techniques. I love Just figure it. figure it out, man. I love it. Because honestly, like, I mean, there's so many variables, right? Like, your mm -hmm. garden's going to be different than mine, even if we have the exact same equipment. Oh, yeah, we're different. You you're know. in a different climate than me and so on and so forth, right? So people try to look at it as, like, mixing a drink. Like, one shot of this, one shot yeah. of this, put some ice in and drink it, and you're going to get There's, like, a recipe they can up. follow imagine, or something. Yeah, if you got the equipment, then obviously that can be, a, it can be, like, science like that. But we're home growers, and we're figuring out on the fly, right? Yeah. So, 
I think a lot of people just panic, man. I, Honestly, I love it. And I, I think you're absolutely right. I think people watch too many videos or see too many things or go read too much and they think they need so much. And really, you really do. The best thing I always tell people, if you're going to grow auto flowers, just grab some soil, get a good nutrient line because you do want some food, whether it's your nutrients are making compost teas with earthworm castings or they're buying a nutrient line like Home Road Cannabis Co's or Neptune's uh, Harvest or something like that. Like or uh, Garden of the Gods, I think, is another really good one. Or uh, I think that's, yeah, I think that's like a Colorado based one. Um, but there's a ton of nutrient lines out there. But I always tell them, go simple, man. You just just learn the fundamentals. Don't really stress training. Sometimes a lot of growers straight up, even photo pure growers don't even do trading. And they just Christmas tree out the plant and let it do its natural thing. And they grow from it. And that's how they tell if it's good genetics. Because I mean, if it's growing and, and yielding great flower by itself, imagine what you know it will yield when you put into it. So I really do enjoy that you say, Less is more because that is really the key to learning how to cultivate cannabis. And now with learning how to cultivate cannabis, you decided to also become a content creator. And I always like to jump ships and uh, go from the educational questions and, and making you be the educator on these podcasts to actually having some fun backstory questions on what was your journey like in the early days of content to creation? Did you have any like hiccups or headaches? Was there moments where you were editing a video for 12 hours and your computer crashed? You know, let us know into those some of those oh, funny yeah. stories <laughs> tons of that shit man I, I honestly i don't know why we do it i don't know why i want, <laughs> even want to make content it's way more work than i really expected it to be and it's really hard to make any sort of monetary value in the cannabis game right now right mm -hmm. but uh fortunately there's lots of companies that are partnering with brands now and and helping out these content creators but to be honest man i'm a 37 year old man that grows cannabis that smokes cannabis and people have always told me, like, I love what you do here. I love what you do there. So I just started sharing it, man. And if I come up with a fucking funny fucking video in my mind, pardon my French, I swear a lot. You're going to have to beep this out. Oh, we don't beep, beep, beep it beep. out. <laughs> um, but, like, I literally, like, I get high down here. I think of something funny, and I fucking do it, man. And, Hell, yeah. And, and the same thing happened with the way that I got connected with you guys. Like, I was high, and I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I've been following Nate for a while. He likes my stuff. I'm mm -hmm. reaching out to Nate because I want to talk to Kyle. Mm -hmm. And I could never get Kyle to like see my stuff because his stuff's probably full, right? Yeah. And then eventually I connect with Kyle. That's the cool fucking thing about this cannabis content creation thing is the community's cool, man. We're all intertwined and we're all just people trying to grow this plant to make it more normal so that people can get their medicine, man. Yep. And that's the cool thing about it. You know, your words are so true and it's so funny that you say all that with kyle too because it's like you i'm sure you still have this like perception kyle is this like just enormous just like godly marijuana figure and it was so humbling the other the last interview i had with him he said something um with uh i was i was talking to victoria and will roland and he goes you know it took me 15 years to fill the sh shoes of kyle cushman and I know like that hit home because like, no, I'm, I'm not Kyle Cushman. I'm far from Kyle Cushman. And I, of course, you know, I'm not going to compare um, yourself or myself or anyone else to Kyle Cushman. Kyle Cushman's Kyle. But that makes, you know, when you step into the shoes of a content creator or an educator, it really does feel different because people really put you and hold you up to the standard. And, and here you go. You know, I'm just this 37 year old guy. And, and for me, I'm 27. I'm just a 27 year old stoner that got lucky blabbing in a mic that people wanted to hear me, you know? So it's so true how these things happen and how the industry is so full of just genuinely nice stoners that are happy to connect, happy to you know educate, happy to share. And uh, I love that you just reached out to Nate because I'll tell you what, my team was so excited as soon as we got that email or message or whatever. Nate blew up our Slack and he was like, "Hey, do you know Basement Auto Flowers? He wants to chat." You know, it was it was such a good, good, exciting moment for us. So we were enthralled, and uh, I think the community is always enthralled to have more and more people like yourself enter. So, what advice do you have? I, I, I'm impressed that I managed to get that question uh, into, into this next one. I'm not going to lie. What, what, uh, what advice do you have for up and coming advocates like yourself who are making content? Uh, you know, what, what are some of the things that you would have done differently at the start? I don't know, man. It just, it seems so crazy because like, I'm such a small time content creator. Like I don't have a massive community of people. 
Um, but the ones that are here, they're watching this right now, man. Yes. Like they follow you around. They're mm-hmm. they're they're part of your fucking family, man. And they're so supportive. So uh, the the biggest the biggest like uh, I guess thing I would tell them to do, man, is be authentic, man. Be yourself because if you're doing this and growing weed just to grow weed and and you're trying to like be somebody that you're not, you really need to love this job because number one, growing weed's hard. Ouch. Number two, editing videos is a fucking hell of a lot of work. And when you're high doing it, man, <laughs> you got to have fun. And that's why I do it, man. So have fun and be authentic. And that's got me pretty far, man. I mean, I only have 8,000 people, mm-hmm. but I imagine if all 8,000 of them are down here right now, mm-hmm. this place would be pretty fucking hot box. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like one of those videos where you see people doing like those crazy vacuums, you know what I'm saying? You're just sitting there like, ah, like, look, oh, that, that's absolutely true. And you know, it's not even about numbers. Like you could have uh, most of my videos get on average less than a thousand to three thousand or less views. Um, and generally, like I have about a hundred and fifty to like three hundred die-hard followers. And like that, you know, numbers obviously you want them to grow, but like it is quite crazy even at a small scale. It's like, whoa, I am a part of this like family that's like this cannabis community. And like people really care about the things I'm doing. And like people, I don't know if you've gotten it yet, but uh, I know when I first started, people would just send me random updates of their garden or their pets or their pets yeah. in their garden. And it's just so cool because you're like, whoa, they're letting me into their life. And like these are perspectives and lives you're touching. And, and this is all new, uh, you know pretty much uh, relationships that you get to be introduced to. And with that, you know, you get to meet some of your idols and some of your uh, people that you've always looked up to. How was it actually interviewing Tommy Chong and Kyle? What were the feeling likes for you? What what was the feeling like as the interviewer? It was surreal, man. (laughs) Like, like like Tommy first was the first one because Mm -hmm. he was the first one that happened. And the way that I connected through Tommy is someone in the community had Tommy booked for a show um, and he never showed up. Like he, it mm-hmm. didn't work somehow. So we were like, well, maybe, maybe something's going on. So I asked him for the email for the manager and he's like, yeah. So I just started emailing and then eventually emailed back. He's like, yeah, Tommy will come on your show. So I'm like, wow, this is crazy. So then I'm thinking he's not going to show. Right. But then he shows up, man. And he's like a regular dude. And that's something that I try to bring to my show is like, I'd be authentic on there. Like I asked mm-hmm. some pretty crazy questions. Like if me and you were just sitting here, like we are now talking, like no one's around, mm-hmm. this is going to go into the interwebs, but there's shit that I'm going to say. That's pretty random. Mm-hmm. And Tommy was a regular dude, man. He wasn't a celebrity. He wasn't a, a massive cannabis icon. He mm-hmm. was just Tommy Chong, man. Yep. And I thought that's what was so cool. So that gave me the confidence that like, these guys are regular people, man. Mm-hmm. And, they're probably going to think I'm pretty cool and I'm going to think they're pretty cool and we both smoke weed. Let's fucking start reaching out to these people. So then we got, then we got Kyle Cushman and that was fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. And I was on this high running all month. And then now we, now we've got uh, George Chavez's might be coming oh, on. Wow. And then we also got Ricky Williams Ooh, might be coming on. That's exciting. So it's like, I don't know, man. I, th- I feel like if you put in the right attitude, man, and you put out, Authentic content, I think good things happen, man. Absolutely. Uh, I'm, I'm blown away. Honestly, I'm speechless for the first time. And if you see my page, I enjoy to talk, guys. I enjoy to talk. All right, I, he's speechless, though. He's speechless. <laughs> no, that's absolutely amazing. And honestly, uh, I did get to watch about five-ish minutes of the intro of Tommy, and I watched the whole Kyle. Uh, I was able to get through that one, and I'm on Mr. Growitch right now. I've got about halfway through that episode, and I have a couple others to watch because I like to go watch the people who I interview uh, when I can, and I have to say that your questions are absolutely fun. They're not your stereotypical, um, not to say there's, there's people out there who do interviews shows that are stereotypical, but there are a lot of them out there that ask kind of the stereotypical, uh, questions for cannabis, especially with Tommy Chong. Um, and I have to say you did a very good job actually showcasing his personality, showcasing he is just a genuine person. And I'm actually very excited to go listen to the rest of the interview. And I urge everyone to go check it out. Um, now with censorship, we kind of talked about it earlier about how you can't really monetize your content and things like that. What are some of the headaches you, you faced um, with now that your show's growing and some of the ideas you might have in your mind? What are some of the hiccups or challenges you might have to jump over um, or get around with being a cannabis content creator? 
Yeah, the big the biggest problem is, I mean, you can't monetize it. So, I mean, you put in a lot of hard work and effort, and no one's really getting any credit for it or, or making any any sort of money value off of it. So, um, that's the biggest struggle. So, I I basically eighteen plus everything, no matter mm. what, just so it doesn't get flagged. I just posted eighteen plus. the The biggest downside with that is people aren't seeing it unless they're necessarily particularly yeah. searching for those topics. Or the notification um, so bell, which the they should click. Harvest, right? <laughs> click the notification yeah, like, bell on his channel. <laughs> yeah, you gotta you gotta click all that stuff, guys, and you gotta make sure you're commenting on everybody's stuff. Like, if there's creators you guys follow, whether it be me or anybody for that matter, make sure you're commenting, make sure you're hitting the bell, make sure you're sharing it, man, because YouTube's not doing that now. Luckily, I've been able to partner myself with a few brands that. I mean, I'm not getting rich. I, I still have a full time job. This is my full time gig, but companies that I'm branding with that are are giving me the opportunity to like buy me things. So like Fastbud Genetics reached out and they bought me a new computer so Woo! that we could run a show for them. Shout out Fastbuds. Um, Shout out Fastbuds. Yeah, and then I've got companies like AC Infinity that um, help me support the channel by giving me equipment and paying me um, small amounts of money to produce content, right? And That's all nice. the content is, it's just me being a fucking goofball. It's not me saying, hey, buy this tent, man, buy these lights. And I mean, go buy them because it does help me for sure. But I mean, I'm not pushing content. I'm just being myself and they're part of the train, right? Mm -hmm. So it's pretty cool, man. I think eventually I could probably do a full time, but it's a, it's definitely a few years down the road, I would think. But hopefully sooner if, if we can make it happen. That's amazing. Well, I hope to see you more full time because I do enjoy the content. And obviously that means you're doing something that you wholeheartedly love and have passion behind and you get to do that full time. That's always the dream, right? So um, I love that these companies are able to partner with you. I saw your partner with TNB as well. You did you did the competition, I believe, um, and you entered their giveaway and all that. And I, I, if I'm not mistaken, you did become part of the team. And yes, yes, Ooh. sweetness, that's <laughs> right. Um, and with these companies like TNB, be like fast buds like ac infinity man that is so amazingly helpful that um you know you you are able to do what you're able to do and one of the biggest annoyances when i first got in with tnb people always kept saying something about the price be able to realize like how much co2 to make your own co2 cost and how much these companies just do in general for the community i mean just here he just said uh fast buds bought him a computer ac infinity you know they're paying them for content as well as helping them out you know sponsoring equipment that's thousands of dollars uh for a content creator and grower to be able to make this uh whatever creation that they're creating, whether it's uh, reels, Instagram, TikToks, whatever it is, they're able to do that for all of your entertainment or education. And so that's, this is the reality behind a content creator like Joe, who is entering the realm where, you know, it's not like a vlogger. He can't just, you know, monetize, click a button and get everybody paid for every second of that video and get ads and all that. Um, and that's really, unfortunately sad. So like he said, please go share and like all the videos. And everything he does. Um, some of the last videos you had recently, aside from the interviews, was like seed to harvest. Now, I want to get into some more questions about what your kind of favorite terpene profiles are that you like to grow towards. And maybe what are some of your favorite things that you you like to make with your product, whether it's do you like to dab? Do you like to smoke? Do you like to make edibles? All that fun stuff. So let's start with the terpenes. Yeah, man. So right now with the seed to harvest videos, I'm not necessarily going after any particular terpenes, um, but like we talked about in the beginning, like I love the fruity terpenes, those berries, the citrus. I mean, those are the ones I'm going after, the lemonines. Mm. Um, but right now what I'm doing is I'm going after some of these high-end genetics that people are really talking about. Okay. So some of these exotic genetics are all over the board. And then also we're partnering with Homegrown Cannabis and we're going to be growing some of your guys' genetics. So um, but right now what I'm doing is I'm just taking like eight different genetics, eight different strains, growing them in my grow room. Ooh. And then we're, we're not training them or anything. We're going to veg them for six weeks. We're going to flip them. We're going to top them once before Ooh. we flip, obviously. Nice. Nice. And then we're going to basically run those from seed to harvest and make sure that we, they, they, bat, they pass the test, right? Yeah. So that the home grower can check them out and they know when they're paying 30 bucks, 50 bucks, 250 bucks, whatever they're paying for the seeds that they know that they're getting their value and they know somebody that's grown them and, yep. and showed real success. Right. So, and that's amazing. That's one thing that we always love to do at homegrown, you know, uh, for all, most of the guests that come on, I always try to, 
I'm, I'm always that, that person at the end that's like, hey, I'll get you seeds if we haven't already offered. So I love that you're partnering with us. We really do try to share the genetics and spread the, the quality. I, you know, I brag about them all the time and it's not a, I'm not pitching a sponsor spiel here, guys. They really are quality genetics. I have uh, 22 autoflowers going in my tent currently and they are solid. They're very healthy. They don't have issues. I've run them you know, many a times in photo periods. And if you guys want to see what he's growing, you'll definitely have to go subscribe to his channel. Um, now, as far as terpenes, so that you're not really a terpene grower, so you're just kind of a cultivar that's just stepping in and, and you're kind of, uh, honestly, <clears throat> you're very helpful to the industry for many breeders, especially many companies like ours, where you're willing to just grow what's popular or what, you know, maybe they would like you to showcase. So it's very helpful. I'm sure you're going to get some seriously dank strains. I mean, we have some like insane ones they're coming out with. So I, I'm only imagining what they've uh, gifted you with. So <laughs> I'm sure it's quite tasty. Uh, my next I got, question. I got a lot of good ones. Lots oh. of good ones coming, man. I'm excited for that. So do you know any I, I off the I'm top? I think I'm playing that role, right? Like there's that, what's that? Do you know any of the strains off the top before you get into what you were saying? Uh, no, it's in an email, but. Uh, but there's there's a few of them. We've got some. We've got all kinds of stuff coming. And one of the reasons why I partnered with you guys is because I've grown your strains before. Oh. Like the strawberry cough that I've grown came from homegrown, okay. and then I got to smoke it on the show. Yes, that's right. It was right. all part of the whole thing, yes. right? So that that will all be documented in a seed to harvest. Like you'll be able to see that whole thing. So Ooh. it's kind of cool. Like it all comes to fruition through Kyle and everything, right? So sweet. So that's cool. And then also like. Right now, I'm playing this role for the community because some of these genetics, like not necessarily home grow, you guys are very affordably priced. Mm -hmm. But like some of these guys that people are talking about, like copycat genetics and yeah. Robin Hood genetics and in-house genetics. And there's a lot of drama around these breeders, mm -hmm. right? So I'm going, you know what? I can get the seeds. Let's get the seeds. Let's try them. And then that way there, if these guys want to spoil themselves and pay for $500 genetics, which I think is bonkers. It is bonkers. Um, then I'm going to grow them first so they know it's real, right? So they are, you know, I, I don't want to piss off anyone because I have a pack of copycat that was gifted to me, okay? And I'm going to say my pack of copycat is specific. I was very, I was very specific with the pack that I chose. They gave me a choice and it was for a, uh, I tattoo. Uh, I was a full-time tattoo artist for many years. And um, one of my clients offered it to me and I had to choose Modified Skunk. Obviously, that's amazing. I really love Copycat Modified Skunk. However, I understand what you mean by drama. There is an immense amount of drama around most of the Copycat strains, just like most of the in-house strains or most of the ethos strains or most of pretty much any big name strain. And I'm not saying drama as in these are shit sh like show thing, just like cookies. Cookies runs had some drama with it. Um, I think the major thing about these packs being so high end is that there are a lot of really top tier breeders who breed just as quality strains that these guys are breeding. It's just because the name's not attached to it and because they're not adding exotic or something, they're not jacking the prices up. And I, I just can't morally be someone that sells someone $500 packs that is like growing for medication. That to me is unreal. Um, but I'm not going to tell what company what to do, but I agree with you. I think it's kind of, there is a lot of drama well, behind yeah. these packs and I think it's, it's good. It's like anything, man. It's like, it's like the fucking girls buying the Chanel bags, right? <laughs> like you can get a purse at Walmart. That's going to carry the debit card. That's got no money on it. Or you can get the Chanel purse, right? Yep. Like, they're going to go head to head at the end of the day. But like, these guys do a really good job at selling it, man. Yes, like they, they, do. They, they have these almost character personas where they they really sell these genetics. It's like back in the day, man, where I would go buy weed, and until I like really got into weed as an older at an older age, like when I was in high school, I thought these fuckers were like making the names up. Like I thought it was like one drug dealer was telling you it was Bubba Kush, and the oh. other one was just adding another Bubba on there. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like he was like, "That's Bubba Bubba Kush." Oh my like, god! And, and these guys do this now, right? Like, yep. I mean, I'm growing a strain right now called uh, Titty Sprinkles. I mean, what the hell is a Titty Sprinkle? I don't even know what that is. Man. That's like right. That's like that unicorn is. piss. I've seen that one circulate, and yeah, like a like, few others. You're just like, what? What? What kind of terp? Like, not to say it doesn't sound appetizing, 
But I don't know about unicorn piss. That's just I nothing comes to mind about what flavors I'm gonna be seeing yeah, like there. It's, it's gassy. It's all <laughs> and gassy based on my based on my thoughts. A little spicy there at the end. Yeah, a little spicy burns the back of your throat. You know what I'm saying? No, I absolutely yeah. love that though. And you know, I love that you have taken the position of growing these packs out or these various breeders because you know, as much drama as there is, as many jokes as we're throwing out there, there is a reason they're high-end gang they are good genetics good genetics are key i'm not going to talk shit on good genetics that's why companies out there exist if you want to go spend a thousand dollars you go spend a thousand dollars but i'm not going to go tell you to do that so my next question is actually about your amendments it's, it has nothing to do with prices or terpenes or anything like that um it's actually going to be just any amendments that you use in your garden aside from co2 because it looks like you you know obviously we talked about tnb but is there anything like recharge or like do you top feed or what's kind of like your go-to method if your plants are looking a little sad late flower yeah, man. So basically what I run, I run a very affordable grow over here. So when I started out, I just went to the local garden shop and I was like, hey, what kind of soil can I grow weed in? And they were like, well, actually, you can use this medium over here. And I'm like, OK, what's what's the difference? They explained the difference to me. And I just started buying ProMix HP. It was cheap. And I just stayed with that, man. And I found I just try to perfect it. So I only use that and I run a salt based nutrient from Green Planet. Okay. So I run their three part system um, with all their additives. So their resin, their their uh, liquid weight, their massive bloom, Ooh. everything for those flower stages. Does it have silica? And honestly, I'm not adding. Go ahead. Does it have silica? Not to interrupt. I do apologize. Yep. So I, I also have a silica through their Veggie Thrive propagation has a silica in it as well. Nice. And then the only other additive that I will add every now and then is um, they do have um, a massive bloom and a resin mm -hmm. combo, which I'll add in late flower or throughout the flower stage. But most of the time, man, I'm just making sure that I'm putting in the recommended dose on the back of the bottle. And then eventually, once I start getting into the late flower, that's when I'll push it a little bit to really kind of see where I can push the girl to see what she can take. And I'm me personally, man, I'm calibrating my pen on a regular basis, making sure that my PPMs are dialed in and my pH is good. That's the only crucial part, man. Like, I think everybody, like, they panic about it, man. And they're like, oh, I got to get I got to get recharged in now. I got to do this now. If you just take your time, man, and, like oh. clean your room. Clean your shit. Oh Check my your gosh. tools. Yes. pH your fucking pen. Calibrate it all the time, man. Like that's the shit you got to do, man. You're overcomplicating it, boys. You're you're getting too much, man. When you're when you're saying eighteen different words with psyllium <laughs> on the end of them, man. When you're doing that, you're you're a bit you're complicating it, man. As oh far as I'm concerned, God. too many psyllium's will, will make you a bit panicked in the garden. Don't don't it's go overboard with the celiums. It's it's a very fair statement. That is uh I'm laughing because we're all guilty of it. Like even I know you probably had a plant where you've overfed and you're like, fuck, I over celiumed it. And like it's just like uh well, just <laughs> well you get people send you pictures, they'll just send you a picture of a plant and they're like, What the fuck's wrong with it? That'd be like me sending a picture of my wife to the psychiatrist and going, what the fuck's wrong with it? What is wrong with this woman? Like, you know what I mean? Like, tell me. There's more to it than that, guys. I can't tell by a picture, man. Like, what have you been feeding it? What the fuck's your humidity at? What are you growing with? Oh, my gosh. You know what I mean? That is so, amazing. I get the uh, what's wrong with it, like, easily three times a day. Just like, and it's like the worst. It's always on, like, a potato camera at, like, the worst angle ever. And there's no picture of, like, any of the plant. You're just like. I have no idea what's even going on here. <laughs> the problem is too, though, there's people out there, they're sending that not only to you, but like four other people that they trust. And there might be one of them that's like, Oh man, that's uh, that's a CalMag deficiency. You're going to want to add a little bit of micro plus uh, dial back your grow a bit. And you know what I like to do in this vegetative stage, just add a bit of bloom nutrients just because for some fucked up reason. And they tell them that. And then they believe that too, man. Like it's, because they had a good run last run or something. Oh right? my so it's, god! It's messed up. We're also we're we're all such proud growers. Yes. But I think we just need to like keep the way we're growing and give them small tips. Yep. It and, don't and try do it to on your own, right? Figure it out. Yeah. Don't try to like push your grow method. That's one thing I've always told people. Like I'll always tell you what I do. I'll tell you the shit I use. But take it and and mold it to your 
growth situation, your variables, your climate, like, and that's why it's so important. That's why I do wholeheartedly like your channel. And one reason I really do endorse people going and watching you is because you don't just spout off what you're using. You do follow it up with information provided of why you're using it. You know, Hey, I'm going to feed my girls this and my temperature range is this because these reasons, you know, you're, you're giving that fundamental understanding. So someone can go, you know what? I don't, I don't have his nutrients, but I can do this and this in my garden with my nutrients. So like, that's where it's, yeah. I do enjoy that. And it's like, there are too many old head growers or even new growers. They're like, bro, it's my way. Your fucking shit is bro science. I read from a forum 20 years ago that you do it this way. And it's like, oh my God. All right, man. And it's true though. His yeah. way is true and your way is true. And we're all fucking right, man. We're all right. As long as we're getting weed and getting high, we're right, man. And yep. that's what growing's all about, right? Yeah, and it's great because, like, y you always find those old growers like, no, this will never grow. This will be bunk. And then you grow it, and they're like, oh, shit, I didn't think it would be successful. And you're like, yeah, man. <laughs> they're like, good job, good job. Welcome to the community. So it is funny how that works. <laughs> but um, I, I, I generally like to get to this point of the uh, podcast where this is the advice section. This is the soul section. This is where you're going to – your 37 years of life on this planet have come to a point to tell the listeners. If there's one thing you could give advice like um, – and generally I ask this at the end of the podcast, but I figured I'd spout this in before some questions um, – what is one piece of life advice or growing advice or just advice for the soul that you would give someone listening that if you could tell your 19 year, your year old self or your 18 year old self, what would it be? Get high more, get high more, smoke more weed, grow more weed, have lots of sex, lots, <laughs> lots of sex, man. Lots of sex, lots of weed, lots of growing. Do it now. Do it. <laughs> Clip it. That's clip that's it. clipped. We clipped it. We're that's the end of the 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 interview. That's all you get. That is that is what we're leaving off Honestly, on. Honestly, man, uh, the best advice is like everyone tells you like, what do I need? Well, they're gonna tell you get the best light, get the best tent. I honestly would get a cheap set off out for like a yes. local a local like site like Facebook Marketplace Yo. or Kijiji or. Craigslist, <laughs> Craigslist. And just get something and make sure that you got enough time in your life. Number one, to be able to run a garden, make sure number two, you got to be able to do that. That's the gardening advice mm -hmm. and your life advice is just fucking swing, man. Swing for the fences. Even if you don't even know how to fucking play baseball, man, because I'm a 37 year old guy with fucking cleats on and I'm in there and I'm fucking hitting a few home runs. So if I can hit it out of the park then so can you motherfuckers. And that's true, man. I love that. That's my life advice right there. I love it. I love that. I love swing for it, man. And and I mean, you're freaking proof. You're you're literally living it, right? Just swinging for the fences. You just you took a shot. You messaged Tommy Chong. You got him on the show. You got Kyle on the yeah. show. I mean, who's next? Like, I, I absolutely believe in that advice. That is great advice. You know, I really loved the smoke weed and lots of sex. I mean, that's a really solid one. I, I mean, that's a good, tip. good, good, solid advice there. Uh, but no, I love the I love the swing for the fences, man. That is that is really great. I think too many people don't take the opportunities that come around to them in life. And I think one of the yeah. things that I I think the reason I wanted to ask that um, in this order is because we had talked about content creation you know the the how you pretty much entered this uh relatively not so long ago you've just been creating funny content that you thought of you're smoking some weed you're not you know some young you know 16 year old tiktok star that's got all the dances down and everything like you know what i'm saying like you're you're making your own way at your own rate like and and that's the crazy thing is like for me, I 37 never even came to mind. You are genuinely a funny guy on with your cannabis skits and everything. The the one I think I saw last time was where you were like, I, I think I – or how much time do I uh, spend filming my plants? And you're like, I should just sleep in here. And you brought this stuff in there and you like <laughs> laid down. It's like, yes, it's so true. Oh, tons of time. Yes. It, tons of time, man. It's And it's relatable. And I think, I think you bring a really good uh, – you bring really good energy and you bring a really good face to this community, which leads me to some of my next questions. 
what are some of the stoner stories that you could tell us growing up that you've never told oh, on man. air maybe there was once where you had an interaction with police or a teacher or skipping school or getting caught please let few. us know <laughs> a few man there's a few like in the early stages man it was like almost like a hard drug for me like it would fuck me right up man like i thought i was going and never coming back you know what i mean like there was times i got so high where like I was tapping out, man. Like, greening <laughs> out is what we call it locally, like yes, where I'm from. You're geeking out, And you dude. get the real bad pasties, right? And you guys call it cotton mouth, but where I'm coming from, we call it the pasties because oh you get, like, God. these white paste in the middle of your mouth. But, like, that was the early days. But then when I got a bit more comfortable with it, man, I remember this one time. We, we rolled this massive joint. We called it the Pope. Oh, my God. And we rolled it up, man. And it was like, I think it was like four ounces into this joint. Holy uh, everyone shit. in high school. There was, I think there was like 25 of us that smoked this. And then we piled five of us into a car. And me and another buddy are in the trunk. And we're driving by the superstore. And we get pulled over. Wow. We're in the trunk. We hear the cops. And luckily, the cops just let us go, man. But we're in the trunk, and I felt like I was trapped, man. I started having a, a panic attack. Well, what happened, guys, is I literally farted in the trunk, and I sharted. I shit oh, no. my pants in the back of a trunk. I is a kid. Oh, my God. That, that, that one I'll never forget, man, because, like, you're in the back of the trunk, and, I mean, the smell is not that bad because it's your own, but. It's killing the other fella, and the two of you are gagging, which is not a good time. It's not a good time. Oh, man, you shard out your homie, bro. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's rough. High shards, bud. High shards. <laughs> Yo, you know, it's I have never done that personally. I witnessed a kid shit himself after taking a dab and puke at the same time. <laughs> so, you dead serious. Hey, anyone that says that they haven't shit before, haven't shard it, or poop themselves there i don't trust well them. i haven't They're done it i haven't done book. it smoking i've definitely maybe in no. the hospital like for sure yeah ten thousand percent everybody has sharded yes yes but never <laughs> never like taking i can i can be <laughs> honest never ne i've never been in a trunk <laughs> i can be honest about that one uh, uh that is a unique experience <laughs> oh man but yes that is uh yeah. that is quite the story you know it's and it's it's stories like those where you you think back and you're like man cannabis used to <laughs> fuck me up and now you're like taking rip by rip and you're like this is nothing oh. i am the smoke lord like <laughs> I, it's so funny man i can totally understand why they say like don't smoke this until it's legal mm -hmm. because like when you're young man like that's affecting you in some pretty messed up ways that you don't even know who you are as a person man and yeah. there's like some of that we were smoking back then i remember doing buckets Oh my God. Like yeah. You'd slam a bucket, man. Like you'd hear like almost ringing. Like, Bro, you just went to, like, <laughs> you went to the next dimension, dog. You went to the next atmosphere. Now, I, I feel like you need to smoke something totally different to do that nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. But, most likely. But I, I agree. Yeah, I'm, it, not, I'm not down to that. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'm not up for that type. <laughs> no, me neither. Uh, no, but me I either. agree. You know, I, we're cracking jokes and I know it's all fun and everyone listening, I want you to stay a light and I want you to enjoy your day. Cause this always comes out in the morning. So enjoy your day, stay lifted, enjoy those happy smoke moments when you were a kid. But for, for those future, now that we have science and like, oh, we're, we are more advocates and we are becoming more educators. I myself feel, um, and I know you probably feel this way, but I myself just stepping into light. I do feel more of a responsibility to advocate for like, yo, don't smoke at a younger age. It does. You do stupid shit. You don't make the best decisions. It, you really should wait until you are older. Your brain is developing. Like focusing on on who you are as a younger, I think that's that's way 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 more important. But you know what? Yeah. Who am I to say I smoked when I was 14, 15, so I can't talk shit. So you know, like that's where it's well, like. See, I was a lot older, man. Uh, I was older than that. Like uh, that's young, man. Mm -hmm. It is You're fourteen smoking weed, yep. man. Like going through like. You're going through puberty and smoking weed, man. Yep. Like that's just a disaster for a lot of high fucking. Oh, you know dude, yeah, it was it was like, a you're disaster. Just for it. That's yeah. teenage pregnancy, right there. <laughs> exactly, Boom. exactly. A hundred. You know, I, I was good because uh, I was a nerdy WoW player that was sick all the time. So I was like pretty much like Harry Potter 
living under the stairs. You know what I'm saying? Just playing my keyboard. Uh, but I, I literally didn't really get out into the dating world until I, I, I'm dating my fiance who I've been with for 10 years. So I was lucky in that manner. But my friends, I will tell you what, my brother has a kid before marriage. Now he has three. Uh, my older brother had a kid before marriage. Now he has four. Um, you know, it's a, it's a trend. It's a trend. <laughs> Yeah, it's a trend, man. It is. Uh, but yes, I love that. And, you know, we are coming up on to the 45-minute mark. And for those listening, all jokes aside, you really should. We are advocating for safe usage. Um, well, this has been a very wonderful podcast, and I wanted to keep this one more light. You're a very comical guy. I have uh, a lot of people that come onto my show, and I make it very education-based or super, you know, drilled into the the business that they're working on or the things that they're doing. And you're just such a lighthearted guy. I really wanted to leave this open to showcase your personality and showcase people exactly the character that they get to watch whenever I watch your show, because I really, really do truly enjoy it. Now, the last thing I kind of want to do is before you give everybody like where they can find you, what are some of the projects you mentioned some seed to harvest with the strawberry cough, but are there any other projects that you're working on? Maybe are there any other guests besides Jose Cervantes or um, the other gentleman you mentioned? I I honestly can't remember off the top of my head. Was it Ricky Williams or was it Steve D'Angelo? Ricky? No, it's it's uh, Ricky Williams yes. from from Homegrow. He's, he's connected with you guys too. Hell yes. Um, and then also uh, we run a show over on uh, Canaflix from Fastpod Genetics, where Ooh. we have a bunch of cool guests over there. Uh, hopefully, we'll have you on our show. Yes. We'll, we should be able to get that going, get yes. you live in the basement. I love that. Uh, but coming up, man, you can expect some copycat genetics, some Robin Hood genetics, some in-house genetics, uh, some cult classic. We've got some ethos. Uh, we've got some acute genetics. We've got some home grow cannabis co genetics. We've got some fastball genetics, man. We're basically being ourselves over here, growing weed, man. And that's what you guys should be doing too. If you're thinking about growing cannabis, you're thinking about starting a home garden, just fucking get started. You're going to get high off your own shit and you're going to save yourself some money and get that medicine that you need and deserve. So, any questions for me, guys, be sure to reach out. You can find me on YouTube at Basement Auto Flowers, Instagram at Basement Auto Flowers. It was a pleasure, man. I appreciate you having me on, and hopefully people come by and check it out, and hopefully we uh, encourage some people to get in the garden, man, because I think that's – really what we're trying to do that's always the goal and i i urge everyone to go check him out he does respond he is not one of the youtubers who won't who will leave you on red or you drop a question he won't respond he absolutely does respond he responds to his uh instagram messages as well as his youtube page he's very active and um you know he is absolutely right. If you're thinking about growing, please start growing. It's not even for everyone outside. It's not for them. It's for you. Your your own lifestyle. It's gonna be so rewarding. Smoking your own. It doesn't matter if it's. It doesn't matter if it looks like the stuff that you see in pictures in high times. Like growing your own is still gonna be better than anything out there because it's your own cannabis. And you've got so many great mentors out there, and you've got great shows like Basement Auto Flowers now. So definitely check him out. Now, without further ado, thank you so much for coming on. I mean, just big round of applause. Uh, I definitely would love to have you back on in the future. We always love to bring our guest on, uh, you know, several weeks out whenever you have more stuff. And I will happily take you up on that invitation to go hang out on your show and let you ask, turn, turn the tide and ask me some questions. So turn the tide, man. (laughs) Awesome, brother. Thanks for having me. Yes. It was a blast. Now for those listening, if you do want to uh, ask him questions or if you have any more questions in the future for him, for me to ask on a future episode, you can tag at chronic that's K R O N I C at homegrown cannabis code dot community and uh, sign up for free on the forum there. There's over 6,000 cultivators that you can ask questions with as well and just hang out and have a chat. Um, and you know, I'm on there as well. I'm chronic for the cannabis chronicles on Instagram and YouTube, as well as the host of this amazing podcast that will be available every single Wednesday. It is brought to us by homegrown cannabis co. I know we mentioned it several times, but they are a great company that is doing great things as far as education, as well as seed genetics. So definitely check out homegrown cannabis code.com and get your top notch seeds to start growing today. Um, Without further ado, much love, much love, happy growing, and peace, everyone.